Hello. The two pieces of art we will be looking at today are Cliff Dwellers by George Bellows, 1882 to 1925 from LACMA, and Waterloo Bridge by Claude Monet, the Denver Art Museum. Both works are symbolic of the changing world and let us peer into the sights of the human experience in their respective styles. Let us investigate the lives of both artists and their works starting with George Bellows. George Bellows was born in, born on August 12, 1882, Columbus, Ohio. Being the son of an architect, taking a pencil to paper was second nature to him. As a child, he would make drawings for his friends and neighbors and be compensated with dates and figs. His mother, though his maternal aunt, Eleanor, encouraged him to become an artist in an early age. He became the first in his family to study art. Later, he would go on and greatly influence the Ashcan school movement. For most of his life, he would remain in the U.S. to teach and paint the scenes of modern cities and with his gritty depictions of everyday life in New York City, George Bellows played a key role in the Ashton School. His unapologetically raw paintings provided record of the urban experience. In addition, through these works, he demonstrated that modern art movements did not have to develop in Europe alone. Rather, he contributed to the advancement of uniquely American approaches to modern realist paintings which laid the foundation for future generations of American artists to build up art story over. When we look at Bellows' work in Cliff Divers, we see a dense crowd of people. There we go. Consisting of women doing housework, children, the homeless, people on trolleys going to work in street vendors, and just genuinely like people living their everyday lives, the use of these lines and we see in the painting in combination with the vertical and horizontal, or a combination of vertical and horizontal, which communicate a, a stability and permeance and reliability, which is interesting to see that with so many people just collided together and living the, 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 the so congested. With the coloring, Bellows used the Ashcans groups, then favored strategies in his work, employing a geometric compositional scheme as well as chords or triads. Complementary colors expanded by Hardis C.G. Marada's color theory, yet his fluid brushwork and vibrant color made his work distinctive as he conveyed the robust swagger and energy of working class life. Here we see the color strategies that Bellows used to explore the realism in New York's Lower East Side. When it comes to what was going on in Bellows' paintings and work, the, the city was growing from one and a half million to forty to five million forty years preceding this depiction, prim primarily due to immigration. And it, the people spill out of tenement buildings into the streets, stoops, and fire escapes. And we see that immigration is a reason for all, these, all the congestion in New York uh, at the period of Fellows' painting. And you see, it captures well the, the moment of change in, in this life, in, and life by letting us peer into the sights of the human experience of this moment. Now, let us take a look at Claude Monet. Monet the father of Impressionism, was born in Paris. His father wanted him to work at a family grocery store growing up, but Claude wanted to be an artist and was encouraged by his mother, who was a singer, to be an artist. Claude was born in 1840. After his mother died, he went to go live with his aunt at age 16 and would later go to art school in Paris. And while in our school, Monet would go out of his way to sit by windows and paint what he saw outside, ignoring the regular curriculum. He stayed in Paris for several years until he was drafted for service in Algeria, contracted typhoid after two years, and subsequently returned to Paris to study more art. But Monet, 
disillusioned with the traditional art taught at universities in 1862, Monet became a student of Charles Weber in Paris, where he met Pierre Auguste Renoir, Frederick Bazille, and Alfred Sisley. Together they shared new approaches of art, painting the effects of light on flare, air, with broken color and rapid brush strokes, in what later became known as Impressionism. And here we see the beginnings of his art styles, beginning to develop and more refined. He would become more refined after like, the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War, which had forced him to move around Europe a lot. That and a lot of his revolutionary activities got the attention of the police. And, uh, you know, after moving around a lot, after the death of his wife Camille, um, and having lived mostly uh, quite just surviving, uh, he vowed to never live in poverty again and would pump out more paintings. Uh, until his subsequent death in 1926 from lung cancer. When we look at his painting of Waterloo Bridge at the Denver Art Museum, which I got to see in person last year, we see the horizontal lines in the bridge paralleling the water, which is meant to, us to, it's meant to ease us. And the lighting tells us the time of day somewhere close past noon. Oh, sorry, the, the lines are supposed to put us at ease because of you know, the horizontal view. But at the time of day looks somewhere past noon. Uh, you see smoke from the nearby factories. And it reminds me that Monet is seeing a haze of smoke caused from the air pollution from the Industrial Revolution, which is common at this time in London. Uh, and it's obscuring his view. <laughs> For a little bit. And in an online analysis, we see uh, in his paintings, light is bursting through a foggy canopy. There's a sense of drama that bursts of light, color, and a few dark accents among the gray atmosphere. Notice how there's more contrast in the painting compared to the two prior. More contrast usually means more drama, activity, movement, etc. In this quote, we see uh, contrast in warm and cool colors, easy feeling of pleasure from the movement the drama, and then and when we take a look at where this was painted, we see it's 1903, factories permeating major British cities, burn coal being burned to provide power to day-to-day -day activities. And with his work, we we see that he's let us peer into the science of the human experience.